We can think about negative evidence in all sorts of different ways. Very often we emphasize the positive when actually there's a whole series of, of negatives, as it were. We think about the Roman villa, don't forget to mention that we didn't find an Iron Age settlement or a Neolithic settlement or a Saxon settlement or whatever it is. We focus on the positives, we forget about the negatives very often, although in terrain modelling and in, uh, in uh, site modelling, such as we see here, we do very often use those residues as inverse residues in order to calculate the probabilities based on our positive evidence. But I'd just like to develop two things from what Roger mentioned earlier on. One is the conceptual version of negative evidence, and the other is the question of, of confidence, and just say one or two things uh, about them. The first thing we need to emphasize is that negative and positive is not a binary issue. There's greater complexity to it than simply binary. Um, let's uh, start over here. So if we think of positive and negative, we often think of them as binary categories. But actually, what we're doing in archaeology has an empirical science means that actually we've got a matrix with four boxes in it rather than simply two because over here we've got true and over here we've got false. This is also the case in many other um, disciplines of course. Simple when you know it's You're going to have to come back and switch it on it. We've got, uh, we've got positive and negative, and we've got true and false. And the problem with uh, a lot of archaeological work, as it is in many other disciplines as well, is determining which of these four boxes we are in, as it were. It's very often the case that we have a false negative in archaeological work, for example, a geophysical survey, which doesn't seem to reveal anything, when actually there is a lot of stuff there. And what we're aiming for, of course, is to be in these two boxes at the top. And studies have been done on this, and, and archaeology doesn't come out too badly compared, for example, with areas of medicine like cancer detection and so on, which follow the same basic rules. What we're interested in, of course, is developing, if you like, techniques and technologies which uh, move these in this direction and these in this direction um, in order to, as it were, heighten what's actually going on and develop our numbers a little bit more. Always, therefore, we've got to think, what is the number that we're using here? And how can we relate it to a more matrix-based approach to thinking about positives and negatives? What that leads us on to, though, is to think about uh, confidence and the notion of the confidence that gets with it. And uh, as Roger mentioned earlier on, a lot of this is very often about the use of uh, different kinds of techniques, choosing them appropriately, either sequentially or in parallel, to develop approaches which allow us to be more confident in knowing where we are in this box, and particularly in getting true positives and true negatives out at the end. So as we increase the number of techniques, for example, um, that we could put it on the bottom here, um, we might expect that confidence increases you know, from somewhere down here in this general direction there. It's not, however, a linear arrangement, and the selection of techniques becomes very important, particularly if you nest those techniques or create them in a sequential way so that your confidence may actually stay low down uh, here, but start to step up as you increase the techniques. And you can easily think of it in terms of, for example, a doctor doing an analysis. You walk into a surgery with some sort of ailment, and the doctor immediately starts to diagnose what's wrong with you. And there's simple techniques at first, patting your back and using the stethoscope, asking you to cough and looking in your eyes. You know, these are very simple techniques. It's field walking, it's geophysics, it's the sort of things that you might do in archaeology. Eventually, when they can't find out what's wrong, you then stick you inside an MRI scanner, then we're talking about some really heavyweight science to find out, and this is what we're talking about in archaeology, when we start doing some really intensive work to reduce the risk that we're into the false negatives. Um, that's, that's the real difficulty. So we can think about it in, in these kind of terms. But um, there's more complexity, as, as, uh, as Roger noted earlier on, um, scale becomes important, and uh, a concept that um, Martin Carver developed a few years ago uh, was the concept of legibility, um, which, is, uh, which is quite an interesting idea. It involves scale, but also the ease with which we can recognize archaeological patterns and archaeological features. 
So that if we continue to have confidence on this scale and legibility, uh, as it were, on this scale, then we can think about how develop technology might allow us to develop a confidence rating as legibility changes and as legibility increases. The important point behind all this, though, is, is the point that Roger made at the end of things. We're very bad at articulating the way that we work with our data in terms of telling the audience or the reader what it is we've actually done and what confidence we have as the person who's done it in the results that we're presenting. Have we done these sort of analyses? Are we confident that it's a true positive or a true negative? Or are we just hedging our bets, as it were, in the background to think about some of this stuff? The articulation of the confidence we have in our own approaches is just as important for positive as it is for negative evidence. Now, in that sense, positive and negative evidence become part of a continuum of understanding social space and the things that we're talking about in the papers today in a way that perhaps allows us to be much more nuanced about understanding the archaeological record. So those are just a couple of things which I hope expand on some of the things that Roger introduced us to this morning, first thing, but we didn't have much time to, to develop and elaborate uh, back then. But it brings us, I hope, more or less back uh, on schedule, as it were, to move forward uh, with the programme.